It's April the 14th. Let's read the Bible. Welcome back, friends, to this year-long journey from Genesis to Revelation in just one year. I hope you have enjoyed this. Has been a tremendous experience for me, and here we are. We are, I suppose, we're a little bit over one-fourth of the way through. Long way to go. I hope you will pray for me that my voice will hold out, my strength will hold out, my health will hold out. Uh, it's, a, it's a long way to go to get to the end of the Bible, but what a joy it has been to meet with you every day, read through the Word of God. And, and by the way, we've been interspersing Old Testament, New Testament, and uh, been dropping in the book of Psalms in, in 10 different segments, the 15 Psalms apiece. We did Psalms 1 through 15, and then 16 through 30, and then 31 through 45, which means that today we are coming to the end of this section of the book of Psalms. If you want to know the schedule we're following, just go to keepbelieving.com. Right there on the front page to scroll on down, you can download the PDF. It explains the plan, gives you the daily readings, and also arranged by months. It's all there for you, completely free. And if you want to know uh, what version of the Bible I'm reading, most of the time, I have been using the Christian Standard Bible published by Broadman and Holman, very fine, newer translation. But in the book of Psalms, I'm using the 1984 NIV. This is the pulpit Bible that we use for the Bible reading marathon at Calvary Memorial Church, the end of December 1999. One of the great events of my whole life where the congregation together. We read through the whole Bible in 90 hours from Genesis to Revelation, and this is the pulpit Bible that we use. Now today, Psalm 44 and 45. Let's just jump right in. We'll see what God has to say to us. Psalm 44, for the director of music of the sons of Korah, a mascal, probably means uh, a teaching song. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what you did in their days, in days long ago. With your hand, you drove out the nations and planted our fathers. You crushed the peoples and made our fathers flourish. It was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your faith, face, for you loved them. You are my king and my God, who decrees victories for Jacob. The, through you, we push back our enemies. Through your name, we trample our foes. I do not trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory, but you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God, we make our boast all day long, and we will praise your name forever. But now you have rejected and humbled us. You no longer go out with our armies. You make us retreat before the enemy and our adversaries have plundered us. You gave us up to be devoured like sheep and have scattered us among the nations. You sold your people for a pittance, gaining nothing from their sale. You have made us a reproach to our neighbors, the scorn and derision of those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations. The peoples shake their heads at us. My disgrace is before me all day long, and my face is covered with shame at the taunts of those who reproach and revile me because of the enemy who is bent on revenge. All this happened to us, though we had not forgotten you or been false to your covenant. Our hearts had not turned back. Our feet had not strayed from your path, but you crushed us and made us a haunt for jackals and covered us over with deep darkness. If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God have discovered it? since he knows the secret of secrets of the heart. Yet, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Awake, O Lord. Why do you sleep? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our misery and oppression? We are brought down to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up and help us. Redeem us because of your unfailing love. Did you catch it there in Psalm 44? Well, there's a lot going on here that the author of this psalm 
is dealing with the fact that the people of God are suffering greatly at the hands of their enemies, and yet it's not this time because they turned to idolatry. He says, we hadn't turned away. Lord, why have you let this happen to us? You get down to verse 22, how desperate. Yet for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Hold on to that. Down the road, if you must down the road, we're going to get to Romans chapter 8. And when we get to Romans chapter 8 and climbing the mount, the glorious uh, doxology in Romans 8, near the end of it, we're going to get to that. Paul is going to quote this verse. We are all day long, we are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. So when we get there, you'll remember, won't you? Psalm 44. Now, Psalm 45. For the director of music to the tune of Lily of the sons of Korah, a mascal, a wedding song. My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. You are the most excellent of men, and your lips have been anointed with grace since God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword upon your side, O mighty one. Clothe yourself with splendor and majesty. In your majesty, ride forth victoriously in behalf of truth, humility, and righteousness. Let your right hand display awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O oh God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia, from palaces adorned with ivory. The music of the strings makes you glad. Daughters of kings are among your honored women. At your right hand is the royal bride in gold of Ophir. Oh, listen, O oh daughter, consider and give ear. Forget your people and your father's house. The king is enthralled by your beauty. Honor him, for he is your Lord. The daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. Men of wealth will seek your favor. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered garments, she is led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her and are brought to you. They are led in with joy and gladness. They enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory throughout all generations. Therefore, the nations will praise you forever and ever. Wow. Come on, folks. That's good stuff right there. Now, this is uh, David. This is Solomon. This is other righteous kings of the Old Testament. This is if you, especially if you think of David or Solomon, you think of the wedding day, you think of the joy and the national rejoicing and, and, and all of it applies. But, uh, but guess what? Guess what? We're going to get down to the book of Hebrews. When we get to the book of Hebrews chapter 1, to establish that Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords, He's going to quote, the writer of Hebrews is going to quote Psalm 45 in Hebrews chapter 1, and apply it directly to the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, this can't be just a human king. Can't be just that. This, though it is describing an Old Testament king, looks ahead to the, to the coming of Jesus, and not just to his first coming, but to his second coming, to his glorification and to his reign over all the earth. Good days are coming. Jesus will reign where'er the sun doth its successive journeys run. His kingdom spread from shore to shore, and moons shall wax and wane no more. Listen, this is it, folks. This is it. Jesus is coming. He is coming. I believe he's coming soon. And we're going to see this fulfilled. We're going to see it fulfilled in the marriage supper of the Lamb. Great days are ahead for Jesus. And since we know him, what happens to him and through him and because of him happens to us also. If you know Jesus, you have a wonderful future. 
If you know Jesus, you've got every reason to go out rejoicing. Go out for him. Lift up your face. Lift up your head. Put a smile on your face. The King of kings and Lord of lords is coming back. He is coming back. He's coming back for his people. Great days are ahead. Go out today. Have a wonderful day, folks, serving the Lord. Come back tomorrow. We will do this again. God bless. Thank you.